I'm going to just switch screwdriver to do the final tightening because that one was a little bit small. It's two. Five, six, seven, and the count says eight. Oh dear, showing off my childhood now. So the pump is in, nice and secure. I thought I heard something drop then. It was probably just that touching the tabletop. We can now put the cover back on. And if I remember rightly, let's have a little look. You can't really tell. It can go on either way, really. That way or that way. Now, if I remember rightly, the pipes come out the back. So I want it on this way. So I now need the screws to go in here. Just push that in a bit more firmly. And we'll find the screws for this next. Which I'm assuming are these but again I'm going to double check and look on the video I've got one two three no it must be these because I have got four of these and they're the only ones I've got four of and now these are a funny little hex head thing let's see if we can find this screw tip for it is it this one no Try something a little bigger. Is it this one? That seems to fit it. And I'm going to have to use this screwdriver now because I haven't got a, a magnetised version of this. I should really magnetise my tips, shouldn't I? this lined up don't want to cross thread it although it's not vital in this instance it's not there's no seal on here it's just covered up the top of the mortar so that's one screw in put the diagonal one in as well just to line things up a bit That's two in. This is a uh, an old magnet out of a hard drive, by the way. Very handy for keeping any screws from running off and across the table. As, soon, as you know, once they get onto the floor, you never find them again. So the fourth one and final one goes in there. And then again, just a, a final tighten down. One, two. And again, don't have to do it diagonally this time simply because there's no seal on this, it's just covering. Can't be really dirty there. Just covering the the mortar assembly, and then we turn it over, and we're on to the next seal, which is the square seal. Now I'm not sure how good this is going to seal because that metal there is looking a bit corroded. So we'll put the seal in, and then we put the base plate on. Now looking at this. I can't see anything I've missed out. The only thing I'm leaving out, as I said, is this horrible piece of rubbery plastic. I'm not sure, silicon perhaps? That would have sat on there. And as you can see, it actually covers up that hole. The water is then forced through here, across this, and back out there. But why, when... You can just force it straight through there and straight across. I suppose they were thinking it'd go through the fins a bit more, but it 
is more prone to blocking up then. Any small particles will block these fins. I'm just going to check there because that doesn't look... Just give it a little blow. No. Okay. Sorry, I thought I could see a little... Still a little bit of corrosion in there, but I can't do much about that. And then this fits on the top here. And all these screws are for screwing this down. So I'm going to screw that down. Again, I'll speed it up for you so you don't have to endure me screwing a base plate on 10 screws. Just check the type of screw it is. Again, it's another type of hex, but I don't think it's the same size. No, so I'm going to have to find the right size for that. Is it this one? Well, that was a good guess. Right, let's get these screwed in. So the first one's in light, and again, I'm gonna do it diagonally. I'll put the first four in, and then crossways. It doesn't matter so much when you're putting the first in because you're not tightening them down. When you're tightening them down, you really do want to try and do it so that the pressure's equal. Okay, let's speed this up. And now for the final tightening, we'll tighten these two first, and diagonally these two, diagonally these two, these two, and finally these two. So there, 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 and there, there. I'll just give it one little final tighten because this is where it connects, of course, to the CPU. And it's the last place you really want anything leaking from. Make sure these are nice and tight. And the base plate's on. Give that a little wipe. With some paper. You see still a little bit of corrosion still on there. I haven't managed to get off. But I think with the paste on there, the heat paste, then that's going to be fine. And I think I managed to scratch don't know how, but I've managed to scratch the top. Never mind. I'll see if I can get that out a little bit later. So, back together. And all I need to do now is connect it up with the final screws back to the radiator itself. And these tiny little screws that you see here, the long ones, they're the ones that fit into the little holes here that hold the actual pipes from the radiator on. And these are fitting screws, of course, for the various parts of the fitting assembly. So now, the next part is to refill the radiator. It has been washed out and cleaned and drained and then refilled. And I'm gonna show you how also I'm gonna add the additive to it to inhibit corrosion. So here we are at the end of the rebuild and refurbishment then. And we're just about to refill it with the distilled ionized water. 
I say refill it, I have actually primed it already because the water that we're going to be using, although they call it coolant, it's just water with additives, is this. It's just from an, a local auto uh, shop really called Halfords that we have here in the UK and it's antifreeze and coolant for cars. It's OAT version. Now you can get silicon version but the problem with that is it actually contains silicon and it coats the surfaces with silicon and it crystallizes which makes me wonder a little bit if they used a silicon uh, substance within this originally to try and keep down the corrosion. It's another possibility but this is OAT and OAT works on a chemical basis. It coats it chemically so it coats all the surfaces chemically to stop them reacting with each other. It is made for cars really but I don't see any reason why it can't be used in a loop. The loop doesn't get anywhere near as hot as a car and it has the same problems. I prepared it already. I've plugged the two pipes back in. I put one screw in on the feed side and the return side I've left unplugged and I'm just going to take this out now, fit it into the bottle, down to the bottom and then we're going to power on the pump and leave it work its way through and then this is actually pink. When we see a good strong pink colour coming through we'll stop it and do the final sealing and screw the last screw in before we refit it and try it. Of course I'm going to make sure it's not leaking before that as well. So let's get on with it then. Let's get this filled up. Now I'm going to try not to knock anything off because everything is sort of balanced precariously at the moment to allow me to do this. I've actually put this little, it's a nice maker in the bottom to lift it off the bottom of the bowl so the water coming out doesn't actually stay on the pump itself and get into the pump and the electronics. So we'll just unplug this and hopefully I'll be able to feed this into here. I think I'm going to have to move this over to the other side to do it. So move that over there and feed that all the way down to the bottom. This is very precarious. Move this over a little bit perhaps. I'm trying not to get it on my hands although this stuff is not as bad as it used to be. It's still not the most pleasant of stuff to get on your hands. Now, I've just made up a little system of pins here to actually get the pump going. Hopefully it won't squirt. You can see, actually see some of the water coming out all there already. So, plus to plus, minus to minus, and let's go. The lights come on. The pump is whirring. I don't know if you can hear that. I've just unplugged it from there. Let's try plugging it back in. So the pump is pumping the distilled water through now. And hopefully, eventually, we will get the pink coming through. I'll speed this bit up for you. after a lot of moving things about and uh, repositioning things and taking things apart again and putting them back together again and finally lifting the bottle up above the radiator I've got the air out that was stopping it from pumping through and as you can see the fluid is now coming out into the bowl here sucking it out of the bottle here so once it's gone fully pink as from the bottle I'll just plug this back into there and we're good to go. That took a lot longer than I was thought it was going to take simply because there was air in the system. I should have remembered that from my car building days. A little bit of air, a bubble or two in the system, especially around the pump, can stop everything from working. So I'll leave that for a moment now to flush its way through. I'll have a little check. There's plenty in the bottle. I got a gauge on the side to tell me how far it's gone down. I'm going to leave it go down virtually to the bottom of the bottle because I can almost put this back into the bottle after I finished. And as usual, I'll speed this little bit up. So it's gone down quite a long way now. It's quite a bit of fluid gone through. 
now comes the dangerous bit. I don't want to go spilling anything or pulling anything off while I do this, but I'm going to just try and make sure there's no air left in the radiator by positioning it so that this is the highest point. And hopefully, hopefully, it'll keep pumping. So any air in the radiator now should be expelled. And the radiator hopefully will be fully filled. I can't see any air bubbles coming out. Just give a little tap. Just to make sure. And that seems to have done the trick. So the last part then is to connect the hose back in there, fit it in, and then put all the fittings on and run it for a while. Okay, so it's been on for over an hour now on full speed, which it doesn't normally run at, of course, in the PC. And there's no sign. There's a tiny, tiny spot there, which was just a little bit that came off the pipes here same as this over here is just where the pipes were a little damp there's nothing actually leaking out which means I can start fitting it back together so it's just and prepare to put it back in the PC last thing to do then is to put the mounting bracket on one of the good things that NMAX actually did get right that is a really easy way of fitting the mounting bracket and of course the narrow one's got the top, the wider one's at the bottom. You can't put it on backwards by the way. You can change the orientation of the NMAX logo thankfully because it, otherwise it might be upside down so it's going to be that way. I'll get on with fitting this in then and then we'll do some temperature tests to compare it to the Noctua tower cooler that's been in the PC since I built it. For now though, Thanks for watching.